A few months ago, something interesting happened. A stranger emailed me. He was a music composer, asking if he could rescore my first feature film, Bad is Bad. I asked if I could use it in a YouTube video. He said, sure. I said, Daddy, you got a deal. And now I have a feature film with two very different scores. But which one's better? And how does it change the feel of the movie? Well, we'll get into it. And we'll get into how to pick good stock music too. So time for the showdown. Musician versus composer versus stock libraries versus this asshole. So this guy Warren rescored Bad is Bad. Now keep in mind, I made Bad is Bad when I was like 20. This thing is so old, it was hard for me to sit down and watch this new scored version of the film, but I did it, so now you have to too. Here's a scene with the original simple score. Now, as you can probably see, we opted to use no instrumentation outside of synths and drones. And then everything else in the score for Bad is Bad is just percussive using household objects. That was like our conceptual angle of how to score this thing. Most of the movie takes place in a house, so let's make all of the instruments that you hear household objects. We thought it was cool. And then we used the breaths because that was the Ray character's theme music. He was a crazy horny guy, so it just made sense. Now our friend Chris did the score for this movie and he was more of a pop musician than a film composer. And he wasn't really used to the process of scoring a film. Nevertheless, I feel like he did a good job. Although there were some tracks where I basically recreated the music in post, by taking the individual percussive sounds into Premiere and then building out the track from there. So the whole process of this score was really whack. Are you dying? Ah! So there's a musician's version, and now here's the rescored scene from Warren, the film composer. <laughs> different, right? Here's another rescored scene. Now, full disclosure, when Warren asked if I would brief him on what I wanted for the score, I basically refused because I just didn't have the time or mental energy to get back in the headspace of scoring this 13-year-old film. The only thing I insisted on was that there was no sentimentality in the score whatsoever. That was just like a really crucial thing for everything about Bad is Bad. But other than that, I wanted him to surprise me, and he did. This score ended up much more Birdman-like than I was expecting, for sure. Okay, I don't even know what the but some of the scenes, it really boosted the production value by having this more professionally produced score. However, having a musician had its advantages for a film score too. For example, anytime we needed diegetic music in the film, he was able to knock that out immediately, often with old music he'd already recorded. For example, this ending lake house scene music. God, what a perfect day. Just happened to have it. So if we flash forward to 2018, we did our short film, Will the Machine, and we had composer Matt Hutchinson creating the score. Now Matt also happens to be a musician, so now we're getting the best of both worlds. When we started working with him, the idea was to do something like There Will Be Blood for the score. The temp tracks that I had was just little riffs of violin that was just trying to provoke some kind of psychological, off-putting vibe to the film. It didn't really work, and once he created his first pass of the score, we quickly realized that we were giving him the completely wrong direction, and it just wasn't the right tone, and it wasn't moving the story along. But what we couldn't figure out was what to do instead. What would actually work for this film? After racking our brains, I think Chris was the one who remembered that this Will character was a villain originally in the feature script that we pulled him out of, but we stopped treating him like a villain once we gave him his own short film. Once we realized that, we realized, well, if we overtly treat him like almost a supervillain in the edit and in the score, suddenly we have a much more interesting film. So we had to break that news to Matt that we basically needed him to start over. But 
but the next thing we knew, he had recreated the score with those ominous Brahms-like sounds that are in the beginning. And everything just started clicking. Matt also on his own added the element of time to the score by very artfully adding this ticking sound that just ratchets up the tension even more. So this is the power of working with a great composer. They're not just elevating the tone or the mood of your film, they're helping literally tell the story. Welcome to the Fun Fact Corner. Did you know that Clint Eastwood, besides directing and acting in many of his films, also was the composer for seven of his own movies? And he wrote or performed music for like 20 more, including cringingly singing in the end of Gran Torino. Oh my Gran Torino. I guess the question, if you want to score your own films, is... Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Now, on my second no-budget feature film, we actually got a real composer on board scoring the movie, somebody that we went to school with, but we didn't think he was pushing it in the right direction at the time. We were very tunnel vision about, it's got to be ambient drones throughout the whole thing, nothing that actually feels like music. And he was giving us this really polished, professional sounding score. Looking back on it, uh, his score was so much better than what we actually ended up with. And he's also now the composer of like a Netflix show, so. Whoops. So what we did was we obtained a copy of FL Studio and a MIDI keyboard. And then we just started throwing in these simple drones and really minimal, simple rhythms. And me and Chris and our friend Ellis just started piecing it together, not knowing what we were doing. We're just kind of winging it as we learn the software. And we had a lot of fun. It was a really cool process trying to figure that out. But ultimately, it was very limiting and it definitely hurt the movie. There were some scenes that needed more than just ambient drones. We needed music that was going to help pace the scenes that I had poorly paced in the script. And that was really tough to do as a composer who doesn't know how to compose music. So we ended up with this weird music that kind of works and is also kind of total ass. Laundering on top of stealing? Oh, we don't use that word anymore. Which one, laundering or stealing? Both. Well, what words would you use to describe this uh, situation? We found it and we're keeping it. Now I'm not gonna say we completely whiffed on the score. I think some scenes that needed simple music, we were able to pull off pretty well. Jesus, what is it? Wait, why do you even have any of the, the you know, is that Oscar? I'm going to throw up. Look, I took a finder's fee. Now, come on, you're focusing on the wrong part of the story. Here. I mean, this movie was very off the walls. For the climax, we wanted it to feel like a spaghetti western. We wanted some harmonica music to come in. So we literally found some guy on Craigslist and paid him 40 bucks to come into our North Hollywood apartment and play his harmonica in the middle of our living room and gave him 40 bucks. And this is what we ended up with. <laughs> But you know what? I also made the music for the trailer for that film, and dare I say, it slaps. I'm gonna tell them everything. Here it comes. Wait for the drop. You all will die tonight. Woo! Back to the corner. Did you know that for 2001 Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick hired a composer, then fell so in love with his classical temp tracks he was using that he decided to completely abandon the original score and just use that temp music. And he didn't even re-record those classical compositions for the film. He just slotted the old recordings he was using straight into the final master of the film, which famous film composer Bernard Herrmann considered the height of vulgarity for a major film director to not only record a new composition for his film, but to not even record new recordings of those old compositions for his film. So I guess the question is, are you a Herrmann guy? or a Kubrick guy. If you've seen any of the short films I've put out on this channel lately, you'll know that I'm a Kubrick guy because I've been using a lot of stock music to complete my lower budget short films, such as The Little Helpers, Joy to the World, Last Laugh Inc., and even that flyweight short film I did in my backyard. 
and the place I got that stock music, Artlist.io, who also kindly sponsored this video. So I've been using these guys for years and the reason I'm always happy to recommend Artlist.io to other filmmakers and editors is the variety and the quality. They have hundreds of thousands of premium songs, sound effects, footage, templates, plugins, editing software, all this stuff to create some really high production value content on the cheap. All their stuff is really highly curated. It's made by real people, real artists, and they have a lot of different plans depending on what you can afford and what you're looking for. So if you just want music and sound effects, you can get that. They have their social creator plan. It starts at $9.99 a month. They also have subscriptions for stock footage and templates starting at $19.99 a month. Or if you want everything they have, they have these new max plans, which give you the footage, the stock music, the sound effects, the templates, the editing software, all that stuff. Again, if you get one of those pro plans, your license basically covers everything. And there's just a lot of convenience and time and money saving by having all of the stuff that you need just under one roof. So big thanks to Artlist for sponsoring this video. But if you can't afford a subscription like Artlist, there are free music libraries out there that you can pull stuff from too. If you've been making videos for a while, you've probably been to incompetech.com at some point where this guy, Kevin McLeod or something, has put out Creative Commons music. Kevin McLeod. So I've definitely used a bunch of those tracks. There's also YouTube's built-in stock music library. There's just some disadvantages to these Creative Commons libraries. For example, a lot more people are gonna be using the same tracks as you. Sometimes there's attribution requirements or you can't use these songs for anything commercial like a paid client job, for example. They're usually gonna sound more like stock music, which, you know, just something like this. The most annoying thing is it's just much harder to search and find the right track for your project on these sites because their search functionality usually just sucks. So in conclusion, composers, musicians, stock libraries, and me. Who wins? Well, it clearly depends on the project and often it can be a combination. But since I'm the one making this video, Hard locked in a grand Torino, it beats a lonely rhythm all night long. Thanks again to Warren Wilcock for rescoring the film. If you want to see Bad is Bad rescored and in 1080p, I put it up on the Patreon. Check it out. I also just launched a Discord server for the patrons. So if you want to chat with me and other like-minded filmmakers, patreon.com slash standardstorygo. See y'all next week, folks.